When companies are able to find all the different areas of revenue leak that exists across their process and stop leaks, the results are profound. And the secret sauce to making all this happen and ensuring that revenue is running like a true business process, there are two main components. One is around collaboration and the way that people work together determining what you do. And the second is governance, how you do it. It's the data, it's the systems. Hey, Revenue Pros. This week, we're taking a break from the interviews. Kyle is here to walk you through the new ways that the most successful businesses are running revenue. No checklists this week, but if you're looking for more best practices to help you achieve revenue precision, check out runrevenue.pro. Now, over to Kyle. I'm Kyle Coleman, sales pro turned SVP of marketing at Clary. Run Revenue is the show where revenue pros learn to stop revenue leak, achieve revenue precision, and grow their companies and careers. This is Run Revenue Show with Kyle Coleman. Revenue by far is the most important business process at your company. And when it's neglected or when it's not run effectively, the results are devastating. The average company is losing 14.9% of its revenue to preventable leaks across the revenue process. And that's according to data that our Clary Labs data scientists have been able to find. At Clary, we call this revenue leak. When companies are able to find all the different areas of revenue leak that exists across their process and stop those leaks, the results are profound. We're seeing 24% increases in win rates, 39% increases in revenue capture for committed deals, and 96 plus percent forecast accuracy in early weeks in the quarter. That's insane. And the secret sauce to making all this happen and ensuring that revenue is running like a true business process is multifaceted. There are two main components that we're seeing the thousand customers that we're working with. We're seeing them pull the same levers. One is around collaboration and the way that people work together determining what you do. And the second is governance. It's how you do it. It's the data. It's the systems that make all this happen. So collaboration and governance, these are the yin and yang that define the entire end-to-end -end revenue process and really allow you to bring a more scientific sort of approach to the revenue process. Many companies are not running revenue in a modern way. They're stuck in the past. They're not making use of all the data that they have. They're cracking the whip on all of their revenue critical employees, just expecting results to change. But that's not really the right approach to doing this. You need to make sure that you have shared processes and shared outcomes. You need to make sure that you have the right things in place to motivate every different revenue critical employee to take the right action in the right way at the right time. Standardization is key. Now, you also need to make sure that these revenue-oriented goals are the goals that define the actions and behaviors of everyone across your go-to-market team. You can't have some teams focus on creating leads if those leads don't actually turn in to revenue. Now, another really important part of this is that you want to make sure that you're using a standardized single source of truth for tracking all of the progress or lack thereof that you're seeing for all the different avenues that you're pursuing to bring this revenue process to life. So your individual reps need to be using the same dashboards, the same metrics, the same sort of source of truth as your CRO. Really, really important. And then finally, you want to make sure that all of the different processes that you are creating are documented well so that they can be fully adopted and governed in a way that allows for scale. This is, as we are looking at and working with our various customers, we're seeing four different quadrants emerge as where different customers are and their level of maturity around their revenue process. And it has all to do with what we mentioned before, the collaboration and the governance that exists across the revenue process. The most mature companies have high levels of both, high collaboration, high governance. And then all the way at the lower end of the maturity model, you see low collaboration and low governance. And then you've got the two quadrants in between with a low high combination of collab or gov. So let's talk a little bit about how do you know what quadrant you're in? And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that you can go right now to runrevenue.pro and you can get a full outline of what good looks like how you can self-assess where you really are, evaluate what's going well and what isn't across your business. And then you can learn how the best in class revenue teams and companies are managing revenue like a process. You can learn from them so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Runrevenue.pro. So 
here are some indicators for the least mature quadrant in this matrix, the low collaboration and low governance. So some indicators may include your SDR team, they're compensated on the meetings that they book. And so what you end up seeing is that they're just throwing unqualified leads over the fence to AEs, but those meetings that they're creating aren't actually turning into revenue. Another indicator may be that the deal updates that you get from your AEs or your account managers are irregular. There's no real set cadence for when they happen, and they're taking up a large part of your team's time and the one-on-ones between AEs and managers are just rife with reporting the news, tactical, not super strategic conversations. Another indicator may be that forecasting is just a chore with a lot of manual steps that often don't even lead to a super accurate or reliable outcome. And finally, you may see that if you have low collab and low governance, you may see that deal inspection doesn't really happen. It's getting backburnered because the insights that reps and managers and leaders need to really do deal inspection, they can't find those insights. They're not easy to find. So they can't collaborate or govern on what needs to happen next. So you're facing quite a bit of what is likely to be undiagnosed revenue leak. You don't know what's going well and what isn't across your revenue process. You don't know where to start. So here are a few ways that you can start. If any of that sounds familiar and you say, oh man, that sounds like us, you're not alone. It's okay. And there are definitely things that you can do to get started and put some of the foundations in place. So a few things. Number one, take a step back and assess where the breakage lies in your team collaboration. Is your team and all the various handoffs that exist across those teams, are they working toward quality or quantity? And are you making sure that you are creating the space as a leader, creating the space for regular communication and input on all the different things that create demand and then close demand? Are you making sure that you are creating intentional space for collaboration? Now, often we have some aversion to meetings, and that's understandable. Meetings, unfortunately, can often be a waste of time. But if you implement the right meetings for the right purposes, you'll find that you're going to have the right folks working together, and that collaboration will yield some really useful things that you can implement across the rest of your revenue process. Number two, ask yourself this question. If someone were to game the comp system, where would they do it? You know, every comp plan (laughs) is rife with some sort of misbehavior. Think about it cynically, if you may. (laughs) put yourself in the shoes of a rep who's just trying to maximize their payout. What would you do if you were trying to game the system a little bit? And you'll start to see, are you incentivizing the right behaviors? Are your comp plans designed to maximize the right things for the company or not? Are they gameable to incentivize the wrong things for the company? All too often, that is the outcome of a comp plan. Number three, look at the tools or processes that you need to get in place to make sure that you and everybody across your revenue org has the data that they need to make informed decisions. We really need to make sure that your revenue process is as proactive as possible and not reactive to things that are just coming in in real time. So think about all the different revenue signal that you have across your marketing technology stack, sales technology stack, whatever it may be, and ensure that you are surfacing the right insights at the right time so people actually know what is meaningful signal, and frankly, the rest is noise. Number four, identify one moment across the deal cycle, across the sales process, that you should always have some sort of check-in. Now, if you have a solid sales process, hopefully there are entry and exit criteria that are gating each stage of that sales process. And at some point, there's likely a linchpin moment for you to say, okay, before anything moves into or out of stage two, I need to make sure that X, Y, and Z things have happened. There needs to be a leadership check-in or a frontline manager review or some sort of forecast call, or there has to be some sort of extra gate to make sure that those deals are as real as you think they are. So every single one of those deals, once they reach that stage, needs some extra level of scrutiny, some extra level of attention to make sure that you can trust how your reps are handling the sales process and that everybody's doing it in a standardized way so that you know Stage two pipeline from rep A is equal the same as stage two pipeline from rep B, C, and D. And then last, number five here, optimize what you have already running. Do you have deal reviews in place? Maybe they just need to be more regular. Do you have one-on-ones between reps and frontline managers already in place? Maybe you just need a standardized agenda. 
you need to maybe bring in somebody else across the go-to-market org into team meetings so that they can provide a different type of insight that will help move deals forward. So all of those things, numbers one through five, will help you increase the amount of collaboration that you have. It'll allow you to increase the amount of governance that you have if you're starting from this place of, hey, we don't have a ton in place. We just got to get something off the ground. Hopefully these five steps will help. Next. So I mentioned that the least mature element of quadrant that we see is the low collaboration, low governance. There are two middle regions that we see here. And I'll start with this first one, which is when you have high collaboration, but low governance. And if you're going to do a little self-diagnosis to understand where you may fall, think about these few indicators that may tell you you're in this high collab, low governance spot. Number one, you can't quickly analyze the last dozen closed loss deals to actually assess what went wrong. That should be easy to do. If you can't do that quickly and easily, that may be an indicator that you're in this quadrant. Number two, you can't ask your sales managers and actually get the deal reviews done as you need them to be done. So if you're asking for something to happen, but you don't feel like it is, or you know that it isn't, that may be a sign you're in this quadrant. And then third, you can't actually track the outcomes from close one all the way through retention and renewal. What is happening across not just the new logo sales process, but what's happening in the retention and upsell and cross-sell revenue process. If you don't have visibility into that post-sales motion with the same amount of instrumentation and rigor as you have on pre-sales, you may be in this high collab, low governance quadrant. So collaboration often is one of the easier things to implement at startup companies, at companies of all size. You'll see that people will naturally want to work together and lean on one another. However, as mission critical as collaboration is, its wings are clipped a bit if you don't have some degree of governance in there ensuring that the collaboration is happening at the right moments and then again, that it can actually scale. So one of the things that we see here when people have high collaboration but low governance is that, yeah, people are working together and it's great and the culture is good and everybody's feeling like they're doing the right stuff, but in actuality, they're focused on the wrong things or maybe to be a bit more charitable, they're not focused on the right things, on the things that definitely would move the needle a bit more. And so there needs to be a bit more governance in place to make sure that they're actually focused on the right things at the right time. So if you need to improve your governance, there are a handful of things that you can work on. Number one, so this sounds really basic, but many companies, many revenue teams do not do this, which is create a shared metrics glossary to ensure that people are defining key metrics the same way. Start this exercise, I promise you, you'll be surprised when you go and ask frontline manager A what the definition of this is, and you go and ask a finance person what the definition of that metric is, and you'll see there's going to be a divergence there. Create the glossary, ensure that people are using the same language for the same things, and avoid any of that chaotic outcomes that may happen when people are thinking they're on the same page about the right terms and the right metrics, but they're actually not. Number two, create a shared up-to-date and consistent data set to reference so that your revenue teams are always able to focus on the highest impact actions on a weekly basis. We need to make sure that everybody is looking at the same data, interpreting it the same way, and then determining what actions to take based on those data inputs. Really, really important. Number three, establish a cadence for a consistent review of what's working, what isn't working, and what needs to change? How can you improve over time? A lot of revenue leaders will really take this for granted and just expect this continuous improvement to happen organically. And to a certain extent, it does. But be intentional about the cadence that you create to review your revenue process. Get your leaders in a room together in some standardized cadence every month, every quarter, whatever it may be, and have an open conversation about what they're seeing and what needs to change. And then be sure to have a data-informed conversation around this as well, where you can look at your pipeline and you can say, hey, we're moving a lot of our deals into stage two, but they're falling off of a cliff after that. What is happening in that stage two to three? And what do we need to do to change, to improve? Hyper, hyper critical that you have a cadenced approach to the revenue process for this type of revenue moment and many others across the revenue process. Finally, align the right data with the right goals so that you know that all of the meetings that you have, one-on-ones, team meetings, QBRs, forecast meetings, slip deal reviews, whatever it is, make sure that the right data is informing those meetings, making sure that you are governing the data inputs so that the collaborative outputs that come from the actions that need to be taken are guided, are useful, are focused on the right stuff. 
And again, a lot of the customers that we see start with relatively low levels of rigor here. So they're looking at the Clary platform as they're really focused on getting all the data in the right formats in front of the right people at the right time and using Clary as the platform to drive all of these moments that we're talking about across the revenue process. Shared source of truth, trustworthy data, defined and shared metrics, ensuring that everything that you're doing and that your team is doing is governed and governed well. All right, let's move on to the next quadrant here, which is this kind of center quadrant. It's the inverse of what we just talked about. It's where you have high governance, which is maybe a nice thing, but you have low collaboration. So here are a handful of indicators that you can use to determine, is this the quadrant that you fall in? First, you may have established processes in place. Again, the governance is high. You have processes in place for handoffs, for meeting cadences, for team meetings and other things like that but you don't actually have a true space for collaboration. How are you ensuring that the handoffs and the team meetings and the one-on-ones are actually useful? Oftentimes we see revenue leaders, they'll set up you know, a frontline manager, they'll have a weekly team meeting, it's 30 minutes, and 29 of those minutes are spent them talking about new enablement programs or talking about what has to happen in deals. And it's a one-to-many kind of tops-down authoritarian type team meeting. And, and that's not a super collaborative space. So make sure that you're being really intentional about the actual collaboration that's happening if you have this cadence of meetings set up. Second thing is you might see that the success criteria is varying across teams. You may have your marketing team hyper-focused on MQLs or your SDRs that are laser focused on booking meetings. Your AEs are focused on stage conversion and CSMs are maybe not totally thought about at all from the rest of the revenue org. And then that's a big mistake. We want to make sure that every single member of the team understands what they're focused on. And the best practice that we see to make sure that teams are collaborating correctly is we want our pre-sales team, SDR, marketing, AEs, focused on qualified pipeline. But more important, we want them focused on high velocity qualified pipeline, which is to say pipeline that is actually going to turn into revenue in some predictable timeline on the post-sale side, and of course, uh, closing that business and revenue is the North Star for any company. And then on the post-sale side, we want to make sure that, of course, CSMs care about adoption. Do your AEs really care about product adoption? Are they selling the right vision? Are they selling the right value journey? Are they focused on delivering the use cases that really matter to the customers? Make sure that you're thinking about all these different success criteria that the team should have and ensure that there is a useful overlap in accountability for those metrics. And that is a key to making sure that the right kinds of collaboration and the right kinds of handoffs are actually happening. Another thing that we see in this quadrant with low collaboration but high governance is that you have a lot of governance around data, but that data is siloed. The data is not necessarily shared or democratized across the rest of the revenue organization. And so decision-making oftentimes is slow. New ideas are dismissed or stymied. And there's not really an inventive sort of freedom and a constant evolution that should be happening across the revenue process. So data and being informed by data is very useful as long as everybody has access to it, can make the same sort of inferences, make the same sort of real-time decisions, and keep things moving. If the only change that's happening across your revenue process is tops down, that's a red flag. We want to make sure that teams have the right frameworks, but within those frameworks, they need to have the freedom to invent new things, find new ways of finding success, and constantly are motivated to work together to share those successes so that they can translate across the entire revenue team. And then finally, and related, you may see that the processes that you have in place are well-governed, well-defined, but they're too rigid, they're too inflexible. And as a result of that, they get outdated pretty quickly and your teams end up losing trust. And what's so interesting about this as we see it happen, unfortunately, too often is that A company thinks they have these really well-regimented, really tightly governed processes, but in actuality, nobody in the field is using because they don't work. They were put into place 10 years ago and expected that 2013 is the same as 2023, and it ain't. So you've got to make sure that your processes, yes, are defined, yes, are well-governed, are implemented correctly, enabled against, but you have to make sure that they're adaptable, that there's flexibility and that they're being adjusted for the time. So. That was some of the indicators that you may see. And let's talk a little bit about if you have good DNA around governance, but you know, you're still a work in progress on the collaboration front. Here are a handful of things that you can do. 
evolve your processes based on today's data. You have more insights, better insights today than you ever have before. So make sure that you're evolving your processes in a responsive way to the data that you have around the shared goals that we talked about that have to happen for people to really feel like they're part of the same team. Shared goals, pre-sales, in the handoff post-sales, and then in that retention cross-sale upsell process as well. And ensure that there's a real feedback loop that exists across all these different stakeholders so that you can collect the feedback on what's going well and what isn't, and you can constantly adjust. Number two, make sure that you're motivating your marketing and sales team to actually collaborate on the top accounts that are in their territories that they need to close, as well as deal acceleration and pipeline maturation processes that need to happen. Too often, those types of deal acceleration things are just solely the job of the sales rep. And that's not the way that modern revenue teams are running. There has to be and should be a marketing component. Your SDR team absolutely can contribute. And it's up to you as a leader to ensure that you are creating the expectation that that collaboration is actually happening. I mentioned this before, but we want to make sure that your AEs and CSMs are able to collaborate on the renewal opportunities, making sure that that initial land is landing on the right use case that's providing the value that the customer actually needs and that there's a considered value journey to take people on so that they're continually realizing more and more value from your platform. And then finally, this is going to be somewhat counterintuitive, but I think it's really important is that you want to intentionally and purposely blur lines of responsibility to give people more skin in the game at different times in the lead or opportunity or retention life cycle. We want to make sure that people, like too often, those lines are too rigid where, okay, there's a handoff here and now my work is done. I wipe my hands and I move on to the next thing. That's not the way that modern revenue teams operate. Modern revenue teams know that there's blurred lines in those handoffs. And yes, maybe, you know, if I'm an SDR handing something off to an AE, most of my job is done. But there's still work I can do to collaborate. There's still work I can do to move this deal forward. And it's up to you as a leadership team to ensure that you're actually making that happen. Now, if you take all of these actions that we just talked about and you can implement them over time, this is not something that happens overnight. Don't put that kind of pressure on yourself. The important thing is that you diagnose the problem, you understand the extent of that problem, and then you can go and figure out ways to fix it. If you can put a handful of these things into place over time, maybe one or two a month, ultimately you'll get to a place where you have high collaboration and high governance. This is your peak Rev CG, Rev Collab and Gov state. High collaboration, which is high collaboration, which benefits from high levels of governance within your company. This is how you run revenue. This is how you control revenue. This is how you have visibility, rigor, instrumentation in a way that leads to predictability, in a way that leads to leaders. Everyone across the entire revenue process, every single revenue critical employee to know what their role is, how they can contribute, how they can collaborate, and importantly, to be able to predict outcomes of what is likely to happen. More important now in 2023 than ever before. And as you'll go through this process, you're going to find, wow, we have areas of revenue leak all over the place across our lead life cycle and our handoff to from SDR to AEs. And then in our deal cycle, we're seeing areas of leak here, here, and here. And you'll be able to diagnose that in the net of that, as we talked about before, it's more revenue, way higher win rates, much better revenue capture, much better levels of forecast accuracy, because you can actually rely on the deals that you have in the pipeline. You actually know that things have a chance to close. So a handful of things for you to do. I already mentioned going to runrevenue.pro, checking out the full self-assessment of collaboration and governance so you can see where you land. Another thing you can do is take the revenue leak assessment where you input a handful of things about your revenue process and you get a little bit of a guess as to how much leak you actually have across your business, the extent of the problem. And then of course, <laughs> the real thing that can move the needle here is adopting a revenue platform that is purpose-built to run revenue with this business strategy of collaboration and governance. And of course, only Clary can do that. So thank you so much. I hope this has been helpful. I've seen it make a profound difference for companies of all sizes, from startups to Fortune 100 and everything in between. So good luck with everything. We're here to help. Don't let what you heard today go to waste. Take two minutes to download today's checklist to get your priorities in line for the week. You can find that linked in our show notes. And if you liked what you heard, 
make sure you give us a five-star rating and leave a review. We'll be back next Monday with more to help you win your week.